Okay, so let's talk about those common mistakes that students just continue to make that really, if they continue just on this track, they're gonna have a difficult time passing algebra. So I'm gonna itemize these mistakes, the most common errors that uh, a lot of students who struggle in algebra continue to make. And I think they, th uh, I think that they think that they've fixed these errors, but then in, uh, in reality, they have not. But uh, if you pay attention to this video and you know you ask yourself, are you making these errors? And if you really fix these errors, and these errors are not too difficult, but they, they do represent kind of like the foundation of algebra, okay? And if you don't get this down, then anything you can uh, attempt to learn in algebra is gonna become very difficult. So we're gonna get into this in just one second, but first let me go ahead and quickly introduce myself. My name is John, I'm the founder of Tabla Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and uh, over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can find a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But if you need to take a full online math course, I can help you out. Or if you need assistance in a course that you're taking, I can also help you out. So. Um, in all my courses, I have full comprehensive uh, lessons. I really get into uh, the topics much more than what I do on YouTube. And I teach you how to solve the most common problems in middle school uh, math, high school math, and even basic college math. Literally solve thousands of problems, all video based. So um, you, again, you can find a link to my math help program in the description of this video. Now, uh, one thing that I must stress to you, and I'm going to be talking about this uh, in this video, is the importance of note-taking, all right? This is one of the most uh, most obvious places that I think students don't appreciate is the importance of taking notes. My golden rule of uh, math, <laughs> after decades of teaching it, is uh, those students who take the best math notes almost always have the best math grades, and the reverse is true. Those students who don't take great math notes, or maybe look at their cell phone, or talk to their best friend, or drift off. Maybe they're doing homework in another class, uh, because that's more important. They got to catch up. I get it. I was a student once myself. But whatever the case is, just know that if you're not taking great math notes, you will pay a price, okay? You don't want to do that. So if you want to do well in math, uh, you got to really focus in on uh, great note taking. So uh, but in the meantime, you need something to study from, so I actually offer detailed, comprehensive math notes. Those would include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. You can find the link links to those notes in the description of this video as well. So we're going to be talking about algebra, but what I'm, uh, what I'm going to be talking about here, can kind of some of it can be applied to any math course, but I've taught algebra for so many years, you just kind of already know what's going to happen before even, uh, you know, you teach the course, right? That's just what happens when you do something for a long time. You generally get uh, pretty good at it, and I'd like to believe I'm pretty, uh, pretty strong uh, teacher in terms of teaching algebra and other courses as well. You know, there's a lot of things I can't do, but teaching math is one thing I think I do pretty well because I've worked several, several years, you know, to become an expert in this area. So you really want to pay attention to what I'm going to be talking about. And let's get to it. Let's talk about these common mistakes that you got to fix if you're going to be passing algebra. All right, so let's just talk about some obvious basic things. The first thing is, is what I've already talked about, and that's note taking, okay? Notes, all right? Uh, a lot of students, will, they'll, you know, they're struggling to math, but they're not fixing their notes, okay? That's just, you're all, it's an impossible, you know, type of situation. If you're not taking great notes, you're going to struggle in math, period period, point blank, end of story, that's it. Now, some uh, students can, very, very few exceptions, maybe with photographic memories, uh, you know, can maybe pass and do well in math without taking notes. I've heard this quite frequently. Oh, I uh, hear this from a lot of students, and it kind of goes like this. A lot of parents, too, which is kind of scary. It's like, oh, yeah, my uh, my child, or I don't really have to work hard. I can just, like, not pay attention, but then I, uh, I'm so smart that I could just go in and take the test and pass the test and do well. Mm, well, yeah, to maybe a point, okay? If you're learning algebra, there's so much information, technical information, uh, processes, procedures that, you know, you're not just going to be able to throw it together. Maybe in the basic stuff, but you're, later on, it, you're, you, they'll come a breaking point, right? And the only way to know what's going on and keep track of what's going on is to have great notes. This is an absolute 
uh, requirement, okay? And it is a skill. It takes time to become a great note taker, okay? Now, along with taking notes is uh, another area, and that's, um, I'm going to call this neatness, all right, or just being neat. I really had a tough time with this when I was uh, a uh, student in high school and maybe even college. I'm not quite sure. I, I definitely had to work on it, but you got to be neat. And if you're um, like a lot of people, myself included back in the good old days, I was generally sloppy, uh, you know, and I would say maybe lazy. I'm definitely lazy, all right? Lazy, sloppy, or whatever you want to, unfocused, whatever the case is. If you are not organized, okay, not neat, not structured, you're going to have a very, very difficult time uh, passing algebra. So here are two obvious things that you can um, be thinking about you know, when you're doing any sort of math. By the way, these are academic skills that apply in other courses as well. Being neat, being structured, taking notes. Uh, this is not easy stuff because you're creating new habits, all right? This is a habit or habits, okay? And um, there's all kinds of uh, uh, rules or theories about habits that it takes 60 days to form a new habit or 90 days, whatever the case is. Here's the thing. If you are inconsistent, sometimes you take good notes and then sometimes you don't, you're not going to have no, you're not going to uh, create a new habit, all right? So if sometimes you're neat and then sometimes you're sloppy, you're not going to create a new habit. This takes time and commitment, all right? So, but the benefits are huge, okay? You got, these are two great starting points, all right, uh, that I think a lot of students just don't appreciate. And their mistakes, right? If a student's struggling, I would say, mm, I can't ever read your writing because you're sloppy. Uh, let me take a look at your notes. I don't have any notes. Well, you know, we can't even, before we even start discussing math, if you're not uh, addressing these two things, then, you know, what's the point, right? Okay, so that's on the kind of academic habit side of the house. Now let's talk about the math side of the house. So these are some real common foundational um, things that students you know, that are struggling in algebra typically continue to make or have these problems associated with them. Not all, but this, these are very, very common, all right? So the first I would say is the order of operations, order of operations. Now, this is all that good PEMDAS, PEMDAS, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, et cetera, et cetera. So, I see a lot of order of operation mistakes in algebra when uh, students are asked to evaluate particular values for variables. They'll plug in, they'll have some big, uh, you know, problem to do with a lot of, you know, addition, subtraction, positive, negative numbers, et cetera. And I see, you know, these mistakes or order of operations. So a lot of students really, uh, they'll make a lot of errors here. If you're struggling in algebra, um, I just see this over and over again. So. Um, this is a good area to review. So if you're not sure if you're making this mistake, obviously, like, you know, I can't look at your your work and diagnose and give you some sort of analysis of what mistakes you're making. You know, that would be pretty cool if I could. But if you're struggling in algebra, it's definitely worth uh, your time to do a quick review of order of operations because you're likely making some errors with the order of operations, not just the basic problems. Do some more challenging problems here. Practice this just a kind of an extra insurance policy. If you're not sure, you know, um, whether you know it or not, okay, because this mistake comes up frequently. All right, now kind of associated with the order of operations is the uh, positive negative numbers, right? Basic rules for integers um, or, or just adding positive numbers, negative numbers, multiplying, dividing positive, negative numbers. This is one of these areas that, is, that a lot of students say, oh, this is easy, the rules are easy, but guess what? I see a ton of mistakes here, okay? So between order of operations and students not quite, you know, mastering or making these little errors. And I, I did a little video uh, a while back on the things that, uh, math students say, especially when they don't do well. And uh, that phrase is like, oh, I knew that. I knew that. Here, I'll write it down here. I knew that. I knew that. I knew that. So what happens is the phrase, I knew that, means that someone makes a mis uh, mistake. So let's say it's negative 3 plus negative 5, and they write down 8. Okay, obviously the answer is negative 8. And if they wrote this on their paper, 
I would, of course, give them, you know, take some points off, and then they would be sad, and, you know, it would just be you know, a whole messy kind of situation, right? But then I would hear this, I knew that, I knew that, and I'm like, well, you know, if you knew that, then you got to demonstrate that you know that, <laughs> right? So, again, a lot of these errors are things that I guarantee you that students would say, I knew that, I just knew that, but I just didn't do that, okay? So you got to practice, you know, right, to really um, create this long-term memory, this skill. It kind of goes with this idea of habits, and, and learning math is a discipline, all right? It's a daily thing. Every time you pick up a piece of uh, a paper and a pencil and you sit down to do math, if you're not going to do it right, I would suggest don't do math at all. You're better off not doing, skipping doing math if you're not going to do it right. Because if you do math in a sloppy, disorganized way, what you're doing is creating a bad habit, okay? And, and you've got to have no habits versus a bad habit because you've got to undo those bad habits uh, to create good habits. So, again, uh, if you're making these little errors, if you find yourself saying, I knew that, I knew that, I knew that, then, you know, you definitely need to do some reviews. Now, uh, review or review uh, reviews of various different topics. Now, let's get into another one, and that is the distributive property. Okay, distributive property. Another area that I have uh, seen and continue to see a lot of mistakes with. Okay, another basic concept that students uh, make uh, errors with. So, for example, let's say we have this. Okay, this is an example where we need need to use the distributive property, right? Now. You have a number outside of a sum or difference. So here, the answer is going to be 2x plus, uh, right, this 2 times x, that's 2x, and 2 times uh, this 1 would be 2. Okay, so hopefully most of you out there uh, will know this, and this is an example of the distributive property. However, okay, here is what I would see quite frequently, and it kind of goes like this. Students will go 2x plus 1, they'll do this part, and for some reason, they'll have their answer is this, 2x plus 1. They'll just do this and they'll stop, okay? So a lot of students make a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of students who are struggling in algebra tend to also make errors with the distributive property. I don't know why that is. I always try to emphasize this and really teach the distributive property to avoid all these things that I'm talking about. Uh, your teacher, uh, if you're taking algebra, probably emphasizes these things if they've been teaching the course for a long time because they know in advance that these errors come up, okay? And then when you're doing more complicated algebra uh, problems, okay, and if, you're, and if you don't understand these concepts, then you're going to really struggle with, like, quadratic equations, systems, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so let's talk about one more, then we'll kind of call it a wrap, and that is fractions. Everyone's favorite topic, fractions, Okay. Uh, students just don't know their fractions as well as they think. It's because, you know, um, we get used to working with a calculator and we avoid fractions at all costs, but you got to understand fractions, okay? You need to know how to add them, subtract them, multiply, and divide because, you know, let's say you have the fraction one-third. You're like, I don't want to work with fractions. I'll just turn this into a decimal point, three, 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 three in my calculator, and then I'll be happy because, you know, I avoided working with those nasty fractions, they're just terrible. But listen, if you have a fraction like A over Z, well, good luck turning that into a decimal, right? You gotta know how to work with uh, numeric fractions because in algebra, there's a ton of variable fractions. We call these rational expressions. But the, the main point is this, you have to understand the, the, the concepts of finding the lowest common denominator, how to simplify, and all the rules to add, subtract, multiply, and divide fractions because there's a lot of fractions in algebra, okay, involving numbers and variables, okay? So this is a common area of um, weakness where students just struggle with, you know, uh, variable fractions because they didn't, you know, really master or they forgot their uh, numeric fractions. And again, of course, we hear that phrase, which I just love to hear all the time. I knew that. I knew that. I knew that. And I'm like, I know that you knew that, but I knew that you didn't know that. So therefore, I'm going to have to take some points off of your little quiz or test just to, you know, motivate you to fix this stuff. Because, you know, there's nothing worse 
than failing a course. Uh, you know, uh, nobody wants to go through that, right? And uh, believe me, as a teacher, that's the last thing you want to do, okay? But you can't, you can only do so much. The teacher can't do it all for you. They got to listen, too. You got to listen to your teacher. Hopefully, you're going to listen to me on this to some degree. You know, don't take my word for it. Why don't you try this stuff and see how things go, all right? But this right here, uh, these two things are just undisputed common sense, right? Like no taking and neatness. You start here, and if you start paying attention to your notes, things are going to start getting better. But um, as you as you continue to learn math, if you don't get these foundational things down, all right, like the order of operations, positive negative numbers, distributive property, fractions, if you got to have those down 100%. You have those down, and then when you go to solve equations and systems and quadratic equations and all kinds of you know rational equations and powers and exponents, things will go much, much uh, better for you, okay? All right, so... Again, you know, you don't want to be uh, at risk of failing algebra, okay? You need this course. This is it's a critical course for your uh, education. You could definitely pass, right? No, you, to, no matter how much you've, you know, struggled up to this point, just got to make a commitment to, um, you know, put in the time and effort to turn things around. And I hope that I can help you along this uh, journey, okay? So you don't have to pass algebra. You could... I mean, you don't have to fail algebra. You can pass algebra, not only just pass it with like a C. Let's get you to get an A plus, all right? That would be awesome. Okay, so if this video in some way, you know, uh, resonated with you, if you felt like, oh, yes, you know, I kind of, you know, understand uh, what this guy is saying, then please consider smashing that like button. That would definitely help me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for a long time. It's a great platform, uh, over 10 years, have hundreds and hundreds of videos organized on my channel, various playlists, uh, basic math to advanced math. But if you want my best math help, just follow those links in the description of this video. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.